What a thrilling life awaits you. The acquisition of knowledge is a sacred activity. A truly educated man never ceases to learn. The future is in your hands. The outcome is up to you. This BYU devotional address with Brian Santiago was given on June 11, 2013. Good morning, brothers and sisters. Welcome to this morning's devotional. Today we will have the opportunity of hearing from Brother Brian Santiago, the Senior Associate Athletic Director. We welcome his wife, Kim, who is seated on the stand, as well as their family members and friends who have joined us today. Brian oversees eight of BYU's NC2A sports teams and supervises game management for football and basketball. Additionally, he oversees sports marketing, sports information, and sports camps. He currently serves on the NCAA Men's Volleyball Committee. Brian was raised in Provo, Utah, where he played basketball and baseball during his high school and early college years. After playing basketball at Fresno State, he played professionally in the Puerto Rican Superior League. Following his mission to the Dominican Republic, he received his bachelor's degree in business administration from Fresno State. In 2001, he earned an MBA from BYU's Marriott School of Management. Brother Santiago currently serves as bishop in his home ward. He and his wife, Kimberly Blackburn Santiago, are the parents of three sons and one daughter. And now we'll have the opportunity of hearing from Brother Brian Santiago. Thank you, President. I'm grateful to be with you today, and especially grateful to be here with my wife and my parents and other members of my family and friends that I work with and fellow students. Uh, I count it as one of the great blessings of my life to come to work every day at BYU. And I hope as you walk the campus that you feel the same way. As a young boy, I still think of myself as young. I grew up on the east side of Provo, Utah, surrounded by the mountains, Rock Canyon, the Provo River, and Utah Lake. I often heard stories about the greatest lake ever, Lake Powell. Friends, classmates, teachers, neighbors, and pretty much every person I knew would relate stories of water skiing, cliff jumping, houseboats, jet skis, sunshine, and good food. I wondered if I would ever have the chance to visit. The years passed by, junior high school, high school, a mission, college, graduate school, and still no opportunity came. In the summer of 2001, the stars began to align. A trip was planned and I was included. To ensure my attendance, I volunteered to drive and bring a couple of people with me. With much anticipation, my wife Kimberly and I, along with a couple of others, headed south for the six-hour drive to Waweet Marina, getting started an hour later than we had originally planned. As we drove the long straight drive approaching Waweep, the red rock cliffs and beauty were apparent, enhanced by a beautiful sunset. It was hard to contain my excitement. Arrangements had been made for Dave Rose, a colleague of mine on the basketball staff and veteran boat operator, to pick us up at the dock and transport us to, to a houseboat already located on the lake a few miles from the dock. As planned, he and his daughter Chanel were waiting and we loaded the boat. The sun had set, the only light and sense of direction was the brilliant moon in the sky. With some hesitation, Veteran boat operators don't often show all of their concerns and fears. The boat was launched and we headed for paradise. Knowing the lake, Dave set a path towards the canyon where the houseboat was located, led by the light of the moon. Within minutes of our departure, it became apparent that a storm was upon us. Dark clouds covered the sky, the moonlight disappeared, and the blinding rain and waves rocked the boat. I now understood Dave's hesitancy prior to the departure from the dock. The thought kept coming to my mind, this is what Lake Powell is all about. In that moment, not that impressed. Multiple prayers ensued as we pressed on, fighting the storm. Suddenly, we slammed into a sandbar. The engine seized. The waves pounded the boat, each passing wave pressing us harder against the sand. Dave yelled for his daughter to jump out into the sand to push us back into the raging waters. Her strength to this day is an inspiration and a miracle. She successfully pushed us against the waves and current back into the lake, 
The engine started and we pressed on towards the houseboat. Fear stricken, we prayed for calm waters so we could arrive safely at our destination. Within minutes, the storm blew on, the moon reappeared, and Dave was able to deliver us safely, albeit wet, freezing cold, scared, and wide-eyed, and still wondering what the buzz of Lake Powell was all about. The next morning, I awoke to one of the most breathtaking places on planet Earth, crystal clear water surrounded by red rock cliffs, pure sand, and a perfect blue sky with abundant sunshine. A place that, in my opinion, could be added to the seven natural wonders of the world. Lake Powell was better than I expected. That experience has proven to be a metaphor for our life, for our journey through life. We must pass and press forward through the storms of life to find the calm, reassuring peace that comes from being safely on the Lord's side. My experience at Lake Powell brings to mind the words of one of my favorite hymns, Master, the tempest is raging. Master, the tempest is raging. The billows are tossing high. The sky is o'ershadowed with blackness. No shelter or help is nigh. Carest thou not that we perish? How canst thou lie asleep when each moment so madly is threatening a grave in the angry deep? Master, with anguish of spirit, I bow in my grief today. The depths of my sad heart are troubled. O waken and save, I pray. Torrents of sin and of anguish sweep o'er my sinking soul, and I perish, I perish, dear Master. O oh, hasten and take control. And then this beautiful chorus. The winds and the waves shall obey thy will. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. Whether the wrath of the storm toss sea, or demons or men, or whatever it be, no waters can swallow the ship where lies the master of ocean and earth and skies. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace, be still. Peace, be still. They all shall sweetly obey thy will. Peace, peace, be still. And then the beautiful last verse. Master, the terror is over. The elements sweetly rest. Earth's sun in the calm lake is mirrored and heaven's within my breast. Linger, O oh, blessed Redeemer, leave me alone no more, and with joy I shall make the blessed harbor and rest on the blissful shore. We have a choice to make as we navigate life and the path back to a loving Heavenly Father who longs for our return. In the Book of Mormon, Alma teaches us, therefore this life became a probationary state, a time to prepare to meet God. Our choice is whether or not we want to be safely on the Lord's side. Every one of us faces adversity, trials, and the storms of life. Today I want to propose three areas that can help deliver us back into the outstretched arms of the Savior. First, being at peace with God through our personal integrity. Second, following the promptings of the Holy Ghost. And third, perseverance. Personal integrity. It has been my experience in life that there are few feelings that rival being at peace with the Savior which comes as a result of our willingness to be totally honest with Him. A recent story shared in General Conference by Sister Ann C. Dibb illustrates this point. Quote, a man went one evening to steal from a neighbor's field. He took his little boy with him to sit on the fence and keep a lookout so as to give warning in case anyone should come along. The man jumped over the fence with a large bag on his arm, ready to collect the corn. And before commencing to take the corn, he looked all around, first one way and then the other. And not seeing any person, he was just about to fill his bag. His boy then called out, Father, there is one way you haven't looked yet. You forgot to look up. End quote. In Doctrine and Covenants section 6, we read, Yea, I tell thee that thou mayest know that there is none else save God that knowest thy thoughts and the intents of thy heart. The adversary teaches us to hide, and when we make mistakes, it is our human nature to hide. The question, who are we hiding from? We win when we are honest with our fellow men, ourselves and God. An experience we had hiring one of our head coaches in the athletic department illustrates this point. With permission from Kerry Summerhays Roberts, I share this experience. 
Our athletic director, Tom Homo, and I had completed the interviews with our final two candidates for the position of head women's golf coach. We had two excellent and very qualified candidates who were both passionate about getting the job. It seemed like we could, go no wrong, could not go wrong with either choice, but we had a tough decision to make, determining who was the best fit. We were searching for something to differentiate the two and kept coming up empty until a meeting with Carrie provided the answer. Carrie and I met in my office and again discussed in detail the job responsibilities and answered her questions, then proceeded to finish the meeting. As she started to leave my office, she turned around and told me she needed to share something personal with me. She proceeded to tell me that she wanted to be totally honest with me against the recommendation of many who had advised her not to for fear it may cost her the job. She then told me that she was expecting a child. I responded by telling her how much I appreciated her honesty and being straightforward because it was crucial for us to plan summer recruiting and prepare for the fall season. She left my office certainly at peace that she had been totally honest, but also wondering if that disclosure of information had just cost her a once in a lifetime opportunity. After she disappeared down the hallway, I walked to Tom's office, knocked on the door and expressed to him that we had found our coach. She had just provided us the reassurance that we would not have to worry about how she would lead the, golf lead the golf program. Her demonstration of integrity made all the difference in the world, and she was offered and accepted the job shortly thereafter. I am reminded of a quote from Elder Tad R. Callister's devotional address. May the integrity of our souls have a sign that reads in bold black letters, not for sale at any price, so that it might be said of us as it was of Hiram Smith. Blessed is my servant Hiram Smith, for I, the Lord, love him because of the integrity of his heart. Elder Callister continued, may we all become men and women of integrity, not because we have to, but because we want to. The Lord announced the reward for those who do so. Verily I say unto you, all among them who know their hearts are honest and are willing to observe their covenants by sacrifice are accepted of me. Second, following the promptings of the Holy Ghost. Living our lives with integrity before the Lord allows us to stand with confidence and provides an avenue for the Holy Ghost to lead and guide us through our lives. The Savior gave us this promise. And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him, but ye know him for he dwelleth within you and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. What an incredible promise and blessing to live our lives with the promise of having the Holy Ghost with us. As I'm sure many of you have had experiences with the promptings of the Holy Ghost, when the promptings of the Holy Ghost have led you away from danger to safety, I would like to share a personal one with you. A few years ago, I was excited to attend the NCAA track and field championships with our men's and women's track teams. I had been newly assigned to oversee the programs and looked forward to watching our teams and individual student athletes compete for a national championship at Sacramento State University. Where I arrived in Sacramento where a staff member picked me up at the airport and shuttled me to the Marriott Courtyard next to the UC Davis Medical Center. After unpacking, I went with members of the team over to the track and watched an outstanding day of competition. After spending 10 plus hours at the track with little to eat, I was anxious to return to the hotel in hopes of finding some dinner. It was pu late, pushing 10 p.m., but I was determined. I walked outside and assuming I was in a safe area, I started to walk toward walk looking for any sign of nourishment. I came to the main road, and as I looked to my left, there seemed to be some possibilities about a mile down the road. Without paying much attention, I started walking toward the lights. After a few moments and still a ways to go, I realized I was in a rough neighborhood and in danger. I was prompted to look behind me, and it became apparent I was being followed. I said a little prayer as I started to walk with extra pace and had the thought to pull out my phone and begin speaking loudly hoping that would distract the two guys following me. I crossed the street on an angle, and while relieved the two trailing me didn't cross the street, I looked ahead to see two men, more men walking towards me. 
I again raised the phone and spoke loudly and passed by the men. They stopped and looked me over, but at that moment I was not interested to ask them what they thought. <laughs> Sheer panic had all but set in as I started a light jog towards the lights and what seemed to be a shopping center. I ran into the parking lot of the shopping center and for some reason wasn't hungry anymore. Scared to death, I spotted a police car parked next to the entrance. I approached the vehicle and the officer was somewhat alarmed to see me coming towards him. He cracked his window as I motioned to him. I told him I was from out of town and was looking for something to eat, but felt I was unsafe. He asked me where I'd come from. I told him I was staying at the Marriott Courtyard at the UC Davis Medical Center. He asked me how I had gotten to the shopping center. When I told him I had walked, he told me to get in the back of his vehicle immediately, and I didn't hesitate. He told me I was lucky to be alive and was surprised that I had made it unharmed. I explained to him that I was being followed and walked head on into a couple of others. He asked me if they said anything to me, and I explained that they had stopped and looked me up and down, but that I was acting as if I was on the phone and lived close by. He said it had probably saved my life, and the outcome could have been disastrous. Needless to say, I've never been so grateful to be dropped off at a hotel in the back of a police car, no matter how it looked to those that saw me. <laughs> it is alarming how quickly our lives can change by decisions we make. Each day, each one of us makes choices that will determine our destiny. Simple decisions that seem insignificant at the time can have lasting effects. It is imperative that we have the companionship of the Holy Ghost to help us stay on the path of righteousness. The Savior teaches us in a revelation given in DNC 11, and now verily I say unto you, I say unto thee, put your trust in that spirit which leadeth to do good, yea, to do justly, to walk humbly, to judge righteously, and this is my spirit. Verily, verily, I say unto you, I will impart unto you of my spirit, which shall enlighten your mind, which shall fill your soul with joy. And then shall ye know, or by this shall you know, all things whatsoever you desire of me, which are pertaining unto things of righteousness, in faith believing in me that you shall receive. Elder F. and Zio Busha in 1979 shared, it takes courage and commitment to follow the promptings of the Spirit because they may frighten us as they lead us to walk along new paths, sometimes paths that no one has walked before, paths of the second mile, of acting totally differently from how worldly people act. For instance, we may be prompted to smile when someone offends us, to give love where others give hate, to say thank you where others would not find anything to be thankful for, to accept jobs that others would be too proud to do to apologize where others would defend themselves, and to do all the seemingly crazy things that the Spirit prompts a righteous, honest, listening heart to do. Third, perseverance. President James E. Faust said, perseverance is demonstrated by those who keep going when the going gets tough, who don't give up even when others say it can't be done, end quote. Those words are music to my ears. Because I believe that to be successful, we have to be willing to do things others are unwilling to do. Above the door in my office, there's a wooden plaque that my college basketball coach sent to me with the following letters, F-A-W and L-U. It is my daily reminder to find a way and never let up. Whether it be small, meaningful tasks or life's biggest challenges, there is always a way to overcome, accomplish, and persevere. With the Lord at our side, we must carry on. In late August of 2010, after a long Sunday as a new bishop, I was sitting on the couch at my parents' home when news of a Mormon bishop tragically killed in Visalia, California, came across the television. Alarmed, I called out to my wife, and to our shock and dismay, it was Clay Sanner, the brother of a close family friend. The ensuing weeks and months were difficult as family and friends rallied around Clay's wife, Julie, and their six sons. The BYU football team reached out and invited Julie and her boys to be part of their Thursday's hero program to give them a day to remember. The team encircled the family, lifted them onto their shoulders, showered them with gifts, and boosted their spirits. It was an inspired effort to help a broken-hearted family persevere through tragedy. Come on over here. The team wants to talk to you guys. My name's Matt Marshall. 
And uh, we just want to thank you guys for coming out. We heard about you guys' story and everything that's happened. And, you know, we look to you guys as one of our heroes. You know, times of uh, struggle, and you guys have been so strong, kind of with something we're going through. Uh, we just wanted to have you guys come out and uh, say uh, how uh, thankful we are for you guys being an example to us. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. I just want to second uh, what Matt said and uh, tell you guys we love you. We don't really know you personally, but we do love you, and you are our heroes. So what we want to do is we want to ask you guys, um, like we ask everyone that comes and visits us with similar circumstances, to sign our flag. Um, and to uh, to put your name on here, pledge, uh, you know, whatever you want to pledge to us or whatever, you know, you want to uh, to your Heavenly Father when you sign this. Um, and we'll carry it out on game day. One, two, three, go! A little over a year later, I was on the phone with Julie. I asked her how she was doing, and her response has been an inspiration to me and others as she carries on. She said, I don't know how I'm doing, Brian, but I keep rowing my boat. I believe, as Julie taught me that day, the Lord will take the other oar and help us row as we navigate our path safely on the Lord's side. Each one of us has the opportunity to join a winning team by being full of integrity, following the promptings of the Holy Ghost, and persevering through the rough waters of life. I am grateful for the Savior and testify that he lives. He knows each one of us personally and is anxiously waiting to see if we will accept his promise. Draw near unto me, and I will draw near unto you. Seek me diligently, and ye shall find me. Ask, and ye shall receive. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For I will go before your face. I will be on your right hand and on your left, and my spirit shall be in your hearts, and my angels round about you to bear you up. I pray that each one of us can find peace and comfort in knowing that the Savior of the world will help us row our boats into, into his outstretched arms. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. This BYU devotional address with Brian Santiago was given on June 11, 2013.